Sunday of our Lord's parable of the prodigal son, which I will talk about in the homily during the liturgy tomorrow. But today, the uh, calendar celebration is for the first and second findings of the head of John the Baptist, the forerunner. Uh, it seems kind of offensive in our modern age to talk about people's heads. Uh, we've become, um, at least in modern America and Europe, kind of immune to some of the crudities of early age, although I started today a book by a German author about the 21 young men um, whose uh, heads were cut off by ISIS in Libya. They were all farmers, they were Coptic Christians, um, they were not priests, uh, you know, they were not readers, they were simply young men, but who refused to yield up their faith in the face of ISIS demand. And um, starting the first chapter of that makes the issue a little more poignant. poignant. Um, let me tell you what happened. Um, Herodias, uh, the wife of Herod's brother Richard and his wife that John the Baptist condemned because, um, not only because of divorce, but because the incest rule in the Middle East, and it still is, that not only are blood relatives incestuous, but consanguineal relatives. That is, you can't marry uh, your brother's wife's sister. And in this case, him taking uh, a wife of, 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 of his brother, constitute incest. And John the Baptist was, uh, if anything, not shy about his condemnation for moral immorality. It's a little problem John Chrysostom had to send him in exile twice. <coughs> the emperor. <coughs> At any rate, after uh, Herod that had <coughs> arrested and imprisoned John the Baptist, but resisted killing him, because he had a sense of uh, superstitious reverence of John the Baptist as a holy man. Finally, the, it was uh, his birthday, and he was a little drunk, and uh, Herodias' 15-year-old daughter at Salome danced seductively, and between lust and drunkenness, uh, he made a stupid promise, I'll give you anything, your dance was so beautiful, even half of my kingdom. And so the young girl went to her mother, and her mother said, tell him you want the head of John the Baptist. And she did. And of course, uh, uh, Herod was embarrassed not to keep his word, and so he sent an executioner, and the executioner came back in with a silver plate with John the Baptist's head on it, handed it to Salome, and she presented it to her mother. Now what happened is that Herodias was very superstitious, and she was terrified that if the head was connected with the body, John the Baptist would rise from the dead and get her. And so she took a couple of servants and buried John the Baptist's head in an earthen pot in a place where nobody could find it. She had one problem, and that is that one of the murdering women, a follower of John the Baptist and later Christ, Joanna, Chusa, Chusa uh, Herod's chief steward's wife, was a maid to Herodias. And she had great reverence for John the Baptist. So in the wee hours of the morning, she snuck out and dug the head up and took it to the Mount of Olives and buried it in the Mount of Olives. And so the head remained missing. And it was several hundred years later, approximately 300 years later, that a well-to-do man had given up his wealth and given it away to the poor and followed Jesus. And he was starting to build a cell on the Mount of Olives. And he dug up this earth and where? Pot. And uh, the Holy Spirit told him to head of John the Baptist. So what he did was to rebury it, because it was still during the time of persecution, in a different place. So it was not under his cell, but it was safe. And it was um, sometime later that um, during the reign of Theodora, the empress who brought out the icons and ended iconoclasm, that the head was dug up again. And that was the second time. And it was uh, taken to Constantinople. It was really interesting, uh, during John Baptist's lifetime, there were no miracles. Because he was a preparer for when the miracles of God would occur. But after the coming of Christ, his death, resurrection, and ascension, the miracles could begin. And so it was miracle after miracle, particularly healing ones, associated with the head of John the Baptist down through the centuries. And, and uh, even the inanimate head of a victim of martyrdom, of lust and of, of drunkenness, of the power of God could act through it to heal people's lives in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Glory to thee.